the history of moves <laughs> no, and I said, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, it's not very long, but I think it's not too interesting for you. Interesting for you. Uh, but I want to give you a short, I, I didn't plan it, but I think it's important, and I'm not going to repeat it in the following years, but to give you a short insight of how our um, organization is structured. Because uh, if somebody asks me for a signature, and I say, well, I need two weeks for that, uh, and on the other end, we, I say we are, we are so small, it's, uh, it's uh, both true. Um, so, uh, I want to give you a short insight of what belongs to the organization itself. Caritas Vienna is uh, one Caritas organization of nine Caritas organizations in Austria. But uh, it's quite big. So, we have almost 5,000 employees, have uh, 2,000 registered volunteers, and like 15,000 volunteers, which we, don't, which we don't have a contract with. This is big, and that's the reason. And uh, in addition to that, uh, the, the director of Caritas Vienna, in the moment, is also director of the, um, um, of the organization Caritas Austria, which is an additional 10th organization. So uh, uh, I see him like four times a year, something like this, and if I need a signature, I have to call several people to where in the world is he at the moment, like this. Um, and in this huge organization, um, there are like uh, around 20 people who are happy to, are privileged to deal with art, and especially community art. And um, three years ago, I I showed here um, a video of the place I was working for before, and uh, some of them, some of you remember. Um, I'm showing this is Brunnen was Brunnen Passage, and uh, Brunnen Passage was kind of the uh, the partner of the foundation in the beginning. Um, now I um, I'm about to build, or we are about to build a new place, a new project. And I've taken certain duties and cooperation partners with me. Um, and there's a third project uh, within um, Caritas, um, which, hello, which is Tanzanians. And you can ignore the date, uh, but they are dealing um, only with dance. Uh, they have, uh, there you can actually see Brunnen Passage, the space, the big venue I, I worked for before. Uh, they have a bit different target groups, they also work with elder people uh, and, uh, and with uh, people with uh, uh, disabilities. Hmm? disabilities. Disabilities, we say with uh, Special needs. Okay. Okay. Other abilities yeah. we say in Spanish. Other abilities, also yeah. nice. Yeah. So, uh, and you can see this place, some of you have been there. Uh, it's a big venue. We have uh, not only these dance workshops there, we have all kinds of events. We have theatres, we have um, performances and stuff there. So this is, uh, I don't want to show you the whole video. Uh, and this is uh, another this is Brunnen Passage, Tanz de Toleranz, and uh, we are kind of the, um, the third project. And all these three projects, are, um, which is also quite unique, we are brands. So we don't put uh, the characters logo on everything, we put our own name and some of our partners don't really know that we belong to characters. Why is that? It's because we, uh, we have to focus on art and we should, uh, the idea is that we also, um, uh, in certain, um, <coughs> that we are, we are taken artistically serious from art institutions and therefore it's not helpful to, to use uh, characters all the time. Um, yes, okay, skip that. Um, 
here. Here I show you um, uh, this our new surrounding. Uh, it doesn't look so different than the other one, but of course this new venue is also at a market site in a valuary um, in a district in Vienna, which is uh, very multicultural uh, influenced. Um, and uh, yeah, we actually we face some uh, similar. Um, challenges there as we did in Brunnen Passage. Um, and uh, what we do there uh, is all kinds of art workshops and it's, uh, um, and it's the idea that we bring art to a place where you don't, um, where you don't expect uh, is expected. And um, of course from the very beginning we were, um, as you also, uh, if you are not only uh, um, concentrating on classical music, we are always there a question like, what is art? And um, and from the very beginning, we we said, well, we we face this challenge, and we don't. Uh, it's not our idea to to make things easy uh, for people. Here on these pictures, you can see there are a lot of windows. People can all, always see what we're doing. We don't have closed office. Whatever is on my screen, people can stand beside me and look at my screen and watch what we're doing. Um, and here, for example, uh, when he was speaking in the glass, we tried. To, we had a, um, a project where we wanted to make a sculpture which uh, shows the diversity and the, the multilingual situation at the market. And um, of course, recording would be the obvious and um, easiest way of doing it, but we try to capture the languages in glasses and make a sculpture out of this, which is of course like a weird idea, and um, but people are kind of used uh, to us having weird ideas now, in the meantime. And we, um, um, as I already said, we don't try to make it simple um, for people. Um, perhaps you know this approach of um, from from uh, artistic research uh, artists who, who work in a scientific um, context. Um, they work a lot with questions, and that's also what we did in the beginning. That we um, that we when we came there, we told people we are not interested. And any answers, we're interested in the questions. And we ask them to give us questions, uh, what we have to ask in order to understand the, the place and stuff. And um, uh, that is uh, quite challenging if you have to do with so many different languages. And, um, and making uh, yourself understandable in one language is sometimes difficult enough. But if you have many languages, it's even more difficult. Therefore, I have a team. Nobody uh, comes to the team without bringing at least one new additional language in the team. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of uh, background information. And the project which I want to uh, present to you, um, what I uh, originally wanted to present to you is a classical school project. We kind of started before, before we um, Became Muse, uh, and and but it's kind of still running, and now we label it with Muse um, because we, we started it uh, already with the idea of Muse in our uh, in our head. But Antonio stressed the point that it's not only about school projects, and uh, so I want to show kind of variety of um, of what we're doing. But actually, there's also always uh, the approach, what we're doing, uh, or the kind of projects we are launching in, in our space, has the same background as what we're doing in schools. So um, when an artist comes and um, wants to be part of Musa, or we approach him to be part of Musa, uh, we look for artists uh, not uh, in the sense of asking them, um, have you any experience in teaching or working with kids or something like that, 
we, uh, our question is like more, what would you like to learn from the kids? Um, not what you're going to teach them, but what do you think you're going to learn in this project, in this context? And I don't expect um, uh, always a perfect uh, answer for this question, but I, uh, uh, I look for artists who, are, who consider this to be an interesting question and to try to challenge, challenge them, uh, challenging, challenging themselves in this project. And uh, the project I'm showing you is a project which was quite a challenge for all of us. Uh, the the um, idea was uh, that we um, that we wanted to um, capture the cultural <coughs> diversity, or the, actually the diversity in all sense, in a musical production. Um, and we um, the idea was like everyone should be uh, should have the chance to be part of it as soon as it. Um, um, as a person to have a lot of communication and to get in contact with many people and to um, uh, it takes time that the news is spread around in the neighborhood and um, we want to, to uh, people to see what we're doing and perhaps then um, develop the interest in being part of it and I'm going to yeah and one more information <laughs> The composer, he had a kind of a, he did a rough, um, a rough uh, uh, composition and, um, and he had some ideas, okay, there will be youngsters rapping and of course um, we're going to write a text at a certain point and it's going to be multilingual and uh, many things and it could be nice to have group of percussionists in there and so on. And of course it turned out another way. His task was to involve everyone and uh, there were instruments uh, coming up uh, which he didn't knew. So it was his task to, to get to know them and to find a place to put it in the uh, composition. And uh, the song is like five minutes or something and we, we ended up with footage material like Days, yeah, and of course we knew that it will be pure madness. So we uh, registered, registered every audio and give them name, and uh, this was kind of part of the project. And we we uh, um, we had to promise everyone who is doing a recording is going to be part of it in the end. Some people recorded several instruments uh, and. But we said, at least with one bit, at least with one instrument, you're going to be part of it. You know. Um, oh, that's the wrong one, sorry. Okay. And now you're good. sound technician said, impossible, this is not a studio, there's no, we have so much noise around, it's impossible to do it. And our answer was, that's why we do it, because it's impossible. Uh, this place has like uh, uh, 40 square meters in the front, 
and we use it for um, as office, as everything. We have a, a little toilet and storage <laughs> we're behind, but we use it for everything. We in, in, in May we're getting a new office in some place because we grow. But, uh, in the past two years, we mainly have done everything we did on the market there. And all recordings took place there. As you see in the background, sometimes it's night, sometimes it's day, and sometimes people pass and okay. <coughs> kind of willing or mm, was, didn't you? And then we um, then I asked my Turkish colleague to uh, take tape uh, and write on our window who played sas for us in Turkish. And she was <laughs> she was taking she was uh, does it have something nice? said no it doesn't have to be nice. Please not nice it has to be like what is it? Like, and while she was taping it on the wall, <coughs> the first people came in to ask, Oh, I can't play sass, but I'm gonna... And then we ended up, uh, the sass player, um, and I went to, 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 uh, to a Turkish um, association who gave um, uh, lessons in these instruments. 
and then talk to the teacher, talk to them, they, they don't have to be good and stuff, and, but no reactions. And then uh, well, when we had taped it on, uh, on the window, there was um, this sass player who was first in this video, he came in, came in and says, what is it? Sounds interesting. Yeah, of course I'm going be part of it. And he says, oh, we say, we're so grateful because we couldn't find any. Um, who have you asked? I've talked to the teacher of this organization, this organization. I said, all my pupils. And he was like, <laughs> we were a foreign team and had so many school. And so he took part in it and he posted it on Facebook. And so we got it. Facebook is also something. We, we didn't use Facebook because we, we wanted to uh, reach a local community. Then we have a Facebook page. But certain things, Oscar um, is coordinating the choir, and I, uh, I always have to say, Oscar, um, um, no nice activities you do, but please don't put them on Facebook. Otherwise, otherwise we're going to be run down by um, uh, Austrian ladies over 50 who, who want to be part of this choir. But we we want to we do kind of diversity management within our projects. So every project we find a different channel to, to communicate it through. And um, yeah, so we really limit us in uh, the possibilities of communication, but in the end, we not only reach these people, but like we talk to hundreds of people and many people say, yeah, we will be part of it. And in the end, they, they didn't, but we, we're still in contact.